Kipsters, it's Mr. Dixon here. I'm so sorry that we're not able to be in the building learning all together as a family, but it's okay. We're going to make the best of our times at home. We're going to continue to do what we do best, and that's grow our brain. I'm so excited today because I get to read one of my favorite stories to you all today. The name of this book is Odd Velvet. But we, before we go any further, I want to take a little time to talk about the word in this title, Odd. You say it, odd, odd. The word odd means something that is different or something that is not normal. Something that is different or something that is not normal. In this book, we're going to read to figure out what are some things that Velvet does that isn't normal. What is Velvet doing that is a little different? Okay. I'm excited to get to read this story to you guys today. Let's continue. Odd Velvet. On the first day of school, Velvet's classmate brought their teacher cinnamon tea, lace handkerchiefs, and heart-shaped boxes of potpourri. Velvet handed her teacher an egg carton filled with seven rocks her favorite red shoelaces, and a half a sparrow's egg. Velvet was odd. At lunchtime, Velvet not only carried a used brown paper bag, but inside of it were things like carrots and a butter sandwich. And she ate them. At recess, a few of the girls noticed that Velvet was not wearing a new dress, even though it was the beginning of the school year. Where did she come from? They wondered out loud. All of this strangeness did not stop after the first day of school. In fact, it got worse. Velvet brought in a milkweed pod for show and tell. Luckily, three of the other girls brought in a talking doll, a wedding doll, and a crying doll and saved the day. Velvet's nose was freckled she had a pack of only eight crayons, and her sweater once belonged to her older sister. Nothing was right about Odd Velvet. Although everyone was polite to her, no one was silly enough to pick Velvet for partner play or to walk home with her after school. No one wanted to be different the way Velvet was different. On the day of the school field trip, the children were laughing and calling each other by their nicknames. Someone called out, What's your nickname, Velvet? It got quiet as Velvet looked around. I don't have one, she said, but my father told me that on the day I was born, the sun was just rising over the mountains, and outside it looked as though the world had been covered with a blanket of smooth, soft, lavender velvet. A few of the boys let out a giggle, but mostly the bus fell quiet. For a moment, everyone was thinking of how beautiful that morning must have been the day velvet was born. The following week, a school drawing contest was announced. There was no question who was the winner, who the winner would be. Sarah Garvey had the best markers, the biggest paint set, and more colored pencils than anyone else in the class. When the day arrived to announce the winner, the children let Sarah sit right up front. No one was more surprised than she was when she when the teacher called out Velvet's name. 
Hmm. So, I can see that everyone thought that Sarah Garvey was going to win that contest because she had that beautiful marker set. She had more colored pencils. But who won the, who won the coloring contest? It was Velvet. Velvet had drawn an apple. It's just a piece of fruit, Sarah protested. Everyone stared at the picture. It looks so real. I would like to eat it, someone said. It seems like you could pick it up, another child added. Sure enough, with just her eight crayons, Velvet had drawn the most beautiful apple the children had ever seen. Take a look at that apple, you guys. I think I want to pick it up and eat it too. Little by little, the things that Velvet had said, the things that Velvet did began to make sense. The teacher had Velvet speak for two whole days about her rock collection. She even had ashes from real volcanoes. Still, on the day she handed out invitations to her birthday party, the whispering began. I bet her house is old and dark, Sarah said. The thought of going to Velvet's house made everyone feel a little uneasy. Velvet lived in a tiny house at the end of a long road. There was no jungle gym or tetherball, just a tall swing hanging from a big old tree. At the door, Velvet's mom and dad politely asked the children in. There were no birthday magicians or wizards, not even a clown. But they got to turn Velvet's room into a castle. The royal subjects painted their faces and put glitter in their hair. They jumped high off the bed into a blue blanket moat. Velvet's sister made each of them golden crowns with colored jewels. They took turns wearing Velvet's royal cloak, which used to be a bed cover. They played cards and shot marbles. Velvet even showed them how to draw beautiful apples. On the last day of school, Velvet's classmates brought their teacher handfuls of flowers, cards that they had made, and an impressive collection of nice looking rocks. Velvet was different, but maybe she wasn't so odd after all. The end. I hope you enjoyed the story. As I said before, this is one of my favorite stories. What I noticed in this story is that people thought that Velvet was different until they got to know her and got to hang out with her. And then some of her favorite things became some of their favorite things. It's always good to get to know someone before you pass judgment on them. I'm, I hope that you guys um, enjoyed the story today. And I'm out of here. Have a great one, stay safe, and be good and work hard. Be nice and work hard. Ah, uh -huh. Miss Catler's gonna get me.